Hi everyone, my name is Jillian. I'm Joseph's girlfriend, and this is Joseph, or you might know him as Mono Blutron. Joseph left me for a whole weekend to play Yu-Gi-Oh! How uh -huh. was it, Joseph? It, it went well, actually. Uh, well, it's good to hear. Yeah, Top 48 got their invite, and I came in at a respectable 46th. So I did, in fact, get my invite. Figured I'd just do a quick deck profile for you. This is about the fifth or sixth time we've tried to do this. Um, not Jillian and me, uh, me and who I was playtesting with, but lighting was bad, we were all tired, um, you know, after nine rounds you just don't want to think about Yu-Gi-Oh, so here I am now. Uh, before I uh, talk about the deck, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I played against, which I wrote down on this handy dandy notepad. Um, I played Awesome Heroes, a uh, deck that if you follow the stream you saw I played a lot of. Um, I lost round one against ABC, one round two against Metaphos Pure, uh, one round, round three against Magispector Pure, uh, one round four against Dark Magicians, uh, one round five against Metaphos Yangzing, lost round six against DDD, seven in the Mirror, eight I won against Nurse Burn, and the winning in was against ABC, and I picked that up as well. So let me tell you a little bit about the deck. First we have four Yon Mega Break. That's a lie. Um, <clears throat> first we have... Uh, three Elemental Hero Shadow Mist, not a lot of innovation uh, as far as monsters go. Three Bubble Man, uh, three Tin Goldfish, two Smunk, one Goblinberg, and two Maxi. I work my hardest to play minimum rarity heroes um, to be the hero I want to see in the world for all those budget <laughs> players out there and mostly just not spend money. Um, uh, not a lot of exciting things going on here. Um, the Summoner Monk uh, was probably not particularly good as a two of. Uh, came out almost every game, uh, along with a couple of spells, and, you know, taking out spells makes Smunk worse, so that's what I was boarding out. But, pretty standard. Tin Goldfish uh, over Goblinburgs because they make Bahamut Shark. Goblinburg's still in there because he's a target for Rhoda. And Maxi's in the main is something I wasn't particularly sold on, but, um, because they, they fuck up Bubble Man. But you can just send it at any time and just minus one yourself for no reason. And more importantly, half your games you have to go second, so you have to have some way to win. Um... Next we have spells. We'll start with three mask change, three a hero lives, three e emergency call, three instant fusion, three twin twisters, and then the one ups. We have soul charge, Rhoda, Raigeki, and Upstar Goblin. I have a question about spells. Yes. Why no desires? Okay, so uh, there's no desires because I couldn't afford it, uh, truthfully. I, I just didn't have the... <laughs> Uh, 180 it would have cost to play it. Um, I think the deck is playable without Desires. Having said that, pretty obviously a whole bunch of my draws, I was just like, if this was a Desires, I'd just win the whole fucking game right now. Um, but this is what I was playing. Three mass change, pretty standard. Three hero lives, pretty standard. Uh, I ended up getting Bubble Man with this a lot more than I thought I would. Um, just because a lot of the time it comes down to, do I want to make Dark Law or Totally Awesome? And about 80% of the time it's Totally Awesome. Uh, three instant fusion, obviously there's only one target, I didn't get a rare fish, and I don't think I would. Um, Toad can recycle Norden if you have multiples, so it's not a big deal. 3E e emergency call, I had this really great game where I top decked this, and uh, got a bubble man from deck and got to use bubble man's draw 2 ability. Uh, I drew into a mask change and an instant fusion, and I won that game, and then I lost the set. Uh, three twin twisters, wouldn't play less than this, uh, was good all day in every matchup, like... Really, really incredible card. Um, I expected a lot of ABC and a lot of Metaphos, so I main boarded two, um, or uh, three instead of two, like I usually like to, um, and it, it was really good. Uh, upstart, Regeki, Rhoda, pretty self-explanatory. This is a card that I was sold on by a friend, um, Soul Charge. It's uh, very good. Um, it was much worse when Heroes was like a long puzzle to figure out how you're going to kill your opponent, and it's gotten a lot better since the deck became make as many tree toads as possible in one turn. So next we have traps. Uh, we have the Solemn Brigade, two strikes and a warning. I like this ratio, probably wouldn't play a different one. Um, strikes were good all day, warning was pretty good as well. Uh, the fourth Solemn, Vanity's Emptiness, God, this card is broken. And then uh, my trap tricks, holes. Uh, I got one Floodgate, which was good almost always, one Bottomless, which was good occasionally, and one Trapple Nightmare, which was really good in the matchups, it was really good, and really bad in the matchups, it was really bad in. But usually one of these three would come out at the very least um, after boarding, like the things Floodgate is good against, Trap Tricks, Trapple is not good against, and vice versa. 
Um, so that's the main deck, uh, 40 cards, uh, because I'm not playing Desires. I don't know, maybe I'd play more if I was. Uh, let me jump to the extra. We have our Fusions, that is, uh, as always, one Anarchy, one Acid, two Dark Law, and one Norden. Um, space in the extra is really tight, and I think maybe I would uh, cut some cards, but this is about the minimum number of fusions you can run. Uh, one thing that I'm particularly bad at is knowing when I should be going into Anarchy and, like, getting more mass changes out of my deck. It's a portion of my game that's particularly weak, so if you ever match up against me, that's how you beat me. Um, next is these four cards. Uh, I, I actually didn't read these. I have no idea what they do. Um, next we have... Hope Woven, Dragon, Titanic, Spider, Buster, Blaster, Shark Man. I, this thing reads like Sharknado 4. Um, I wasn't sold on this either, but he really does his job very well. Um, he's an out to a lot of the big monsters that Heroes really doesn't have a very uh, efficient out to otherwise. Uh, he's easy to make. There was maybe one or two times when I had to go into Utopia instead of him because I didn't have the right materials. Um, but otherwise, he's much better. Um... Rafflesia, Abyss Dweller, and Utopia. If I cut anything, it'd be the Utopias. I didn't go into them. I got win in like once, I think. Um, Rafflesia was okay. I didn't go into her a lot, but the threat of her in the deck was really good. She won me a game against Nurse Burn, my round eight matchup, which was really fun. And uh, of course, Abyss Dweller. I think this is secretly the best card in the deck. Uh, really important that you include this, even if its effect is not particularly good because it allows you to detach on your first turn, which means you can extend your combo plays if you like have an instant fusion and a bubble man attached and you're like, okay, I have no other way to make a... Bahamut Shark, except do this, um, having an Abyss Dweller and a uh, Bahamut Shark Tree Toad is much better than just having Bahamut Shark Tree Toad and like a summon on go. Um, and then we have Castell. Uh, Castell was good, of course, but um, <laughs> during one of my games against my testing partner, Sorob, uh, I... <laughs> He took my Castell with his Tree Toad because he was playing Paleozoic Frogs and forgot to give it back. We have the same sleeves, so seconds before the round start, I realized I have 14 cards in my extra deck and I had to run to a vendor and buy one. Uh, he just misplaced it, so uh, he was fine too. Uh, next is the extra deck, which is right here, the side deck. So... Right off the bat, we have the best card in the, act in the side deck, three Anti-Spell Fragrance. This was good almost all day. Um, I think I boarded it in like 80-90% of games, great against ABC. Uh, I hear it's pretty good against Pendulum Strategies, which I saw a lot of Metaphos and Metaphos Yangzing hilariously. Um, pretty good against Dark Magician, uh, I guess it was good enough, I, I suppose. Uh, just a lot of shit that this is incidentally very good against. Um, and it came in, I think, every time I was on the play. Uh, two Gamsiel, uh, also boarded this in almost every game. Uh, very good against Rogue, which there was a lot of at this tournament. Uh, guys who made Kali Yuga, guys who made, um, you know, big behemoth beasts like that. And obviously still pretty good against shit like ABC2. Uh, two Flying C, this was in here for, like, the ABC matchup. If I saw any Dante's floating around, I would probably board this in. I didn't get a chance to use this very often. Uh, I boarded him out every time I was on the play and in, in times I was on the draw, but he ended up not mattering. I don't think I saw him at all. Um, three system down. I came to play against ABC, and although I did, I did not actually draw this card at all this weekend. Um, two Typhoon, a standout card of the side deck. I really, really loved it. Um really short up a lot of bad matchups and it really gets a lot of bad players um occasionally abc players will be like set one activate uh union hanger and suddenly your typhoon's on and you just go oh typhoon uh during your uh, when you play it so typhoon's a great card uh, i think it's good enough um i liked it every time i saw it and worst case scenario it's just like mst and then finally, the standout card of the extra deck, for real, Royal Decree. Um, this is a card I put in because I expected frogs, but I didn't know how much I wanted to pack against them. It's a bad matchup, and I didn't want to, like, devote a whole shitload of slots just to make it a slightly better matchup. Um, Royal Decree, of course, is not as good against them as I hoped it would be, but you know what it is good against is Nurse Burn, which I beat two games in a row because of this, uh, and otherwise would have lost, and, um... Dark Magicians. This card is actually nuts against Demok because they can't use Navigation uh, to do what they want. They can't use um, uh, their other Busted Traps, Eternal Soul, things like that. Uh, Royal Decree is really good against that deck, and surprisingly, it was around a lot. 
So uh, that's my deck profile. Um, saw very little meta actually, a lot of rogue. Um, and by rogue, I mean like meta strategies off splashing, like um, you know, Yangzing metaphors. I consider rogue things like that. Uh, but um, had eight really good rounds and one game against Nurseburn. Uh, placed in top forty-eight. Got my invite. So that's it. Now I'm gonna go poop. See ya.